Welcome to the February 15th meeting of the Mobile City Planning Commission. I would like to take a moment to review our general operating procedures and apologize for the slight tardiness of our start. We are awaiting one more Planning Commission member that will be important for two of the agenda items. Our meeting is divided into two sessions, the public hearing session and the deliberation session. In the public hearing session, an application or group application on the agenda is called. The applicant makes his or her presentation. Commission members ask questions, if any, and members of the public may make their comments. Only four people may speak for an agenda item and four against an item. Each speaker is limited to five minutes, subject to questions by the commission. After four minutes, the speaker will hear a loud beep and that'll indicate one minute left to speak. And at that point, we ask that you summarize your comments. After all opposition speakers have finished, the applicant will be given time to respond. If you do intend to speak, please come to the podium, speak in the microphone at the bottom of the stairs, give your name and your address for our minutes. Please direct all comments to the commission only and not to the applicant or the audience. And please remember to speak directly into the microphone. On routine applications, the applicant may simply raise his or her hand if there are no objections to the staff recommendations. I will then announce that the applicant is in full agreement with those recommendations. If there are any questions, the applicant will be given an opportunity to respond. After hearing all applications, the commission will then go into deliberation where we discuss each application with input from staff as necessary, but with no input from the audience. The commissioners then vote on each application and the results of the voting can be learned from the planning department. If some issues arise during the deliberation session that were not addressed in the public hearing, we have the discretion to allow additional comments pertaining to those issues in order to resolve them, or we will call for the application to be held over for discussion at a future meeting. Occasionally, one or more commission members may recuse themselves from discussing and voting on a given application. A recusal does not necessarily mean the member is directly involved with the application or the applicant but depending upon the circumstances, ethical rules may require a recusal when there is only the slightest appearance of a conflict of interest. The Planning Commission makes final decisions subject to appeal for subdivisions, planning approvals, and planned unit developments, or PUDs. And it is noted that the Planning Commission only makes a recommendation on zoning applications with the City Council making the final decision. At this time, please turn off cell phones or at least turn them to silent. Commissioners and staff, please remember to turn on your microphones when speaking. Roll call, myself, Jay Stubbs, present, Mr. Alan Cameron, Ms. Jennifer Denson, Mr. Carlos Gant, Ms. Shirley Sessions, Mr. Taylor Atchison. Here. Mr. Matt Anderson, Mr. Nick Amberger. Here. Mr. Scott Jones, Ms. Susan Carley, Mr. Kirk Matei. At this time for Majority of the agenda items, we do have a quorum. I'll entertain a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Motion is properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. We'll move straight to number one. It has been recommended for holdover. This is the north side of Government Street, the Griffith subdivision. Mr. Chairman, it's actually been held over and notice given. So it's held over until the March 16th meeting for their subdivision, their PUD, and their rezone. Seeing it as it on the agenda, if there's anyone here to speak on that agenda item, please let me know. Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number two. This is an extension of application 4251 Bit and Spur Road, High Point Subdivision. Staff has recommended request for the one-year extension to be approved. Is the applicant present? In agreement? The applicant is present and in agreement with the extension. Is there anyone else here to speak for agenda item number two? Is there anyone here to speak against agenda item number two? Seeing none, we'll move on. New subdivision application, number three on the agenda, 156 Cosgrove Drive, the Hilltop subdivision, first addition to a resubdivision of lot one, block A. It's been recommended for tentative approval subject to nine listed conditions. Is the applicant present? Are you in agreement with the nine listed conditions? Applicant is present and in agreement. 
Is there anyone else here to speak for agenda item number three, 156 Cosgrove Drive? Is there anyone here to speak against agenda item number three? Seeing none, we'll move on. Agenda item number four, 3836 Gordon John Drive, SNL Industrial Park Subdivision, Phase One Resubdivision of Lots Three, Four, and Five. It's been recommended for tentative approval with seven listed conditions. Is the applicant present? Are you in agreement, sir, with the seven listed conditions? The applicant is present and in agreement. Is there anyone else here to speak for agenda item number four, 3836 Gordon John Drive? Is there anyone here to speak against agenda item number four? Seeing none, we will move on. Agenda item number five, this is under new sidewalk waiver application. This is the address 1521 and 1525 Azalea Road and 4071 Halls Mill Road. Staff has recommended this application for a waiver of sidewalk on Azalea Road to be denied. Is the applicant present? John Peterson, Mont McDonald, and, and we're representing the owner of the parcel at uh, 1521 Azalea Road requesting the sidewalk waiver. Um, conditions under which we're asking or requesting this um, to be considered are one that, uh, you know, obviously the employee parking is available on the site for all employees. There's none walking in this vicinity and it's a dead end street um, close by. Um, we do have an extensive landscape area plan, um, and um, the other idea would be that the uh, additional impervious from the sidewalk adds to an already, uh, you know, impacted area for drainage that, uh, you know, we can minimize those impacts without the sidewalk. And and I think that's all I'd have to say about that. All right. We'd appreciate a favorable consideration. Thank you, sir. Again, it's been recommended for denial on the sidewalk waiver. The applicant has stated their reasoning for submitting the application for waiver. Any questions from commissioners? I have a question for staff. Uh, just to remind us, what triggered the uh, request was a land disturbance permit that had to be applied for to build a new building? Yes, uh, they're building that new building on the site, and because of the level of improvements, the site has to come into compliance. What does that mean, because of the level of improvements? Is that over 50% of the value Correct. of the lot? Yes. And y'all recommended denial based on the commission. pedestrian traffic in that area? or No, the commission actually, you see across the street, there's a sidewalk that runs from here all the way to here. Uh, some of those were put in voluntarily. There were at least two properties, though, that filed, side, filed sidewalk waivers with the commission, and those were denied. And there's, there's, not a, there's not a physical reason why it can't. It's not like we're fighting a big ditch or some existing topography situation that's just too, too expensive to overcome. This is a curb and gutter commercial park that's, that's basically flat. Our comments, it's, there's no physical, it's flat. Yeah. It's hard, it's hard to tell from that map. Is that, that parcel that was to the west-northwest, is, is, does it also have a sidewalk? Or is that a footpath? It does not. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to make sure I know what you're talking about. Oh, you're talking about here. Yeah. Hold on. That's the sidewalk. Oh, it is a sidewalk. Well done. She's doing a quick Google Street. And while, while she's looking that up, any recollection of the sidewalk waiver denials that were upheld across the street where we, re, we made the industrial parcels build sidewalk? Is that a recent or are those much older properties? 
It was in the 90s when those waivers were heard. Just lately, when there's not any residential or any reason for pedestrian traffic and high commercial activity, we have been approving some uh, some waivers to not build sidewalks. Just that is a sidewalk. So this would be a continuation. Okay. Any further comments or questions from commissioners on agenda item number five? 1521 and 1525 Azalea Road. Seeing as it's on the agenda, is anyone here to speak for number five? Is anyone here to speak against agenda item number five? Seeing none, we'll move on to our group applications section. Agenda item number six. 4570, 4580, and 4590 Shipyard Road, 3T's Trucking Container Subdivision. We have a subdivision and a rezone application. The subdivision has been recommended for tentative approval with nine listed conditions. And the rezone, Ford Engineering Services, has been recommended for approval with two listed conditions. Is the applicant present? Are you in agreement with the subdivision conditions? Are you in agreement with the rezone approval and conditions? Applicant is present and in agreement on both subdivision and rezone. Is anyone else here to speak for agenda item number six, 4570, 4580, and 4590 Shipyard Road? Is anyone here to speak against agenda item number six? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next group application, agenda item number seven, 401 Water Street, GDH Adams subdivision, and a rezone. The subdivision has been recommended for tentative approval with seven listed conditions, and the rezone, I'll ask staff to comment on regulating plan amendment, amendment has also been recommended for approval with three listed conditions. Is the applicant present? Are you in agreement with the subdivision conditions? Are you in agreement with the uh, rezone conditions? Applicant is present and in agreement. Is there anyone here to speak? Well, I should note to the commissioners, we have notes at your desk on comments from this application from a Mr. Edward Oliver. I'll give you a couple of seconds to review that. Is there anyone else here for agenda item number seven uh, against this agenda item? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Also note that there's a proposed text amendment that's item C under this agenda item. I skipped over that, Bert. Thank you very much. So would you, uh, Part C of agenda item number seven has a text amendment to appendix A, section 10.B.7. And it's been recommended for a change that's listed in your agenda. <laughs> Do I need to read that in its entirety? I don't think so. Uh Staff did not make a rec recommendation for or against. It just listed the proposed text. Got it. Quick question for staff. Is the text amendment the process, a process we don't normally see, is that because of the special district? Is that the process of editing the DDD in a special district? Well, it's just due to the fact that they're amending the written regulations of the downtown development district. But that's not due to the regulating plan. So it really doesn't have to do with the special district, anyone could propose a text amendment to the That's DDD correct. for a certain area? Or a specific issue within the regulations that they would like to have amended. And then, I'm not sure if that's where I read, we make a recommendation on that and it goes to City Council for approval? That's correct. Thank you. Any 
any further comments or questions from commissioners on agenda item number seven? Moving on to agenda item number eight, 650 Michigan Avenue, Alabama Power Company. We have a subdivision application and a rezone application. It's been noted that uh, Mr. Kirk Matei is recused. This time I'll get comments from staff with the fact that this agenda item now has no quorum. Are we okay to continue with public hearing? You can have the public hearing, but it will have to be held over until the March 2nd meeting for, before it can be voted on. Is the applicant present? Uh, the subdivision has been recommended for tentative approval with nine listed conditions, and the rezone has been recommended for approval with two listed conditions. The applicant present. Applicant is present and in agreement. Is there anyone else here to speak for agenda item number eight, 650 Michigan Avenue? Is there anyone here to speak against agenda item number eight? Yes, sir. Please come on down. My name is Winston James. I reside at 1460 Douglas Street in Mobile. And, uh, my task is a very, I know I'm going against the Alabama Power Company, one of the largest companies in the whole United States and state of Alabama. But I, I live next door. And I'm trying to figure out why, what's going on here. I'm not familiar with all the, I know the rezoning and applications for uh, uh, subdivisions and all this kind of stuff. Apparently, when they Alabama Power Company moved in that site, they all of them visit me at my house, and they allowed for they they, they begged and pleaded till I came down here during the commissioner's time, and agreed to let them build that part over there from the from the from the, from the uh, Alabama what it was a it was a, a what it called I guess a where they sold stores and uh, all these kind of things was there. But now they got the Alabama Power Company, and they must have, apparently they don't have no uh, no security. They got enough lights over there to think I'm in prison, and I'm staying next door. The lights never go off all day, all night, every night. And so it's making it very difficult for my, me and my family to survive in that area because we can't sleep unless I put something up against the windows and try to keep out the light. They are doing that because of they have a problem with, with security, I imagine. So I'm opposed to anything going over there unless somebody come tell me what they're doing over there. They, they, my neighbors, true enough, I live next door. Do I have any kind of say-so at all what's happening with my property compared to their property? I know they are big shots and they big time, and I don't have very little I can say. But I do oppose that anything that's going on without me having some kind of say-so. Now, maybe I might not win the argument, or I might not get nothing out of it, but I won't get my peace off. I have peace of mind. I can tell my family I did my best. I'm not able to go out there and buy another house. I don't want to move. I was there when he got there, so I intend to die and stay right there. Okay? That's all I had to say about it. And I, you know, I wish y'all would let me know. I got the, I got the letter now. I wish they sent me a registered mail, and I figured it must be something important. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. James. Yes, sir. All, all uh, residents within 300 feet of the property on the application submitted were notified. So that's why you did receive the registration letter. Is there anyone else here to speak against agenda item number eight? Yes, sir. My name is Ben Dinkins, Jr. Um, my mother-in-law, she lived there, and uh, Mr. James, I know him real well. And everything that he brought to the council, I, I am in agreement with. And I'm, my wife and I, we're planning on moving from where we are now to that residence. 
And what he said so far, I'm in agreement with it because the lights are real bright there, and you know, and he know more about it than I do. So I was up listening to what he had to say. So um, I, I am in disagreement with everything that he brought forth to the council. All right, thank you, sir. There are two more slots for anybody that's in against agenda item number eight. Would the applicant like to respond with respect to the comments from the residents? Yes, I'm Irwin Barrett. I don't work for Alabama Power Company. In, in the, address the microphone. I don't, I don't work for Alabama Power Company. I'm representing them on this behalf of rezoning that property. Um, that property is 24 acres. It consists of multiple lots and subdivisions. Um, it, um, the rezoning and the resubdivision of it is trying to put it more in compliance with uh, the requirements from the city. It's, it's not for any future development or buildings going up there at the time. It's just to fix a problem that they've had for a long time with being zoned incorrectly for its use. So I'd like to put these gentlemen's concerns of what's going on there at ease. There's nothing nothing going to be going on there uh, that would uh, increase noise or light. I will say that if there's a light problem, I'll bring that up with the power company. And if they can address that, I'm not here to speak on that. But that's all I have to say about it. Thank you so much. And just to reiterate, the development does not call for any new new buildings or new lighting. Any questions or comments from commissioners? A quick question for staff. Is this property regulated by a uh, PUD? No. Um, what they're doing, what's really motivating this is they have the overall site, and as you can see, there are right-of-ways that are to be vacated and vacate, already vacated. Then they have this piece of property here vacant land it's been part of their property that's still zoned r3 so the motivating factor is to get everything under one zoning on one lot and there are multiple buildings on the site but is it because we're under the udc now that it doesn't trigger a plan it's not under the udc yet that goes effective March 1, but they are not proposing any additional development that would trigger the need for a PUD. All the buildings that are there are there. Okay, so the rezoning doesn't trigger Correct. because there's multiple buildings. Correct, okay. because there aren't any new ones proposed. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? Seeing none, we'll move on to the next group application. Number nine on the agenda, 6815 Cary Hamilton Road, the Theodore Distribution Complex subdivision. It's been recommended for tentative approval with eight listed conditions, and the rezone has been recommended for approval with two listed conditions. We have a letter here, Margaret. Uh, yes, the applicant asked that we provide a copy of that to the, com to the commission. Was it, do we know if this was sent to just this resident or was it all the rest? Oh, there you are, sir. Thanks. I'm right here. <laughs> um, I can address all that. Um, Adam Metcalf, 5 Dolphin Street. Um, the only reason I, I asked um, the staff to give you that is I wanted to, and I don't know if anyone here today is, 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 has any questions or, or any of the neighborhood, but um, anytime we do something like this, I want to always be as transparent and available as possible because when someone when a when a resident receives a cert just like this man said I received a certified letter and it's got to be important so um, I sent that letter in advance to everyone within the 300 feet that received the notice from the city um, just to as the letter says to say this is in layman's terms this is what we're doing and if you have any concerns or questions please call me and you know i'll come see you or whatever in addition to that um i erected um 
one of my own four foot by four foot signs next to the city's um, zoning sign um, that uh, we normally say for sale or lease, but on the rider it says for additional information, please contact me. Um, to date, I have received one phone call um, from a um, from the neighborhood, and this the gentleman. There's only one. There's two structures across the street from it. On the uh, um, you'll see where it's um, you'll see where it says all vacant land to the south of it. Right there at the bottom corner, there is one residence right there um, that is occupied. The other ones, um, there's a couple um, structures, but they're not occupiable. It doesn't look like. But that man called me. I explained, and he said that sounds good to me. Um, and in addition to that, where it says vacant land, uh, the large track um, that is to the south of those individual lots, um, that's a local um, a local um, entity that that uh, owns that. Um, prior to this, I sent when we first started talking about it, I sent a letter to him, and then he received the 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 second letter from me, uh, which is the letter you have. And then I called him twice to see what their plans may be, um, tell them what our plans were, and I never received any comments. So that was the purpose of that letter, is just to let you know what, what I tried to do. Thank you, Mr. Metcalf. Yes. So since you're there, are you in agreement with the eight listed conditions of the subdivision and the two listed conditions of the rezone? Zoning, yes. Subdivision, I want to um, um, make one comment. Go ahead. This is a large site. It's 33 acres, and, and I didn't... Uh, can't remember what my frontage is, but it has to be well over a thousand feet. Margaret, would you agree with that? What is okay, eight hundred feet. Um, uh, the exact configuration and where this building may be and the size, we don't really know. Um, the reason I did a one lot sub is because we don't know what the future of it would be. There's a very good chance we'll end up having to to maybe do one more lot out of this. Um, and uh, additionally, uh, whatever building is put there or whatever size, it will have to have um, um, uh, secure access with its own entrance and probably a gate. Um, their existing buildings have electric gates. Um, we have um, considerable interest in, uh, um, in parts of the remaining property for some um, IOS, which is the real estate term for industrial outside storage. Um, uh, truck trailer parking and things of that nature. Um, and there's a very good chance we'll be doing some of that very quickly. So if, we, if we're limited to one curb cut, then we can't use the rest of the property because it's because uh, uh, we can't allow additional um, traffic that's not related to the first part of the development to use that access point. So I would like to... Uh, um, to have y'all consider um, amending that limitation to one curb cut to two. And I think that's not an unreasonable request given the amount of frontage and the fact that if we do as, which is probably very close to what's proposed, again, we won't be able to access any part of the rest of the property. And then as far as the, uh, the zoning, yeah, I'm cool with that. Oh, sorry. Jackson, Alabama, I'm sure it's a... <laughs> quick, quick question for Apple. Yes, please. The, the only frontage is on Kerry Hamilton Road? That's correct. Road. That's correct. Okay. And there will be no... And again, someone may, may ask about this if they're, if they're deeper into the neighborhood, but um, if you're familiar with the vicinity map... Do, Margaret, do you have something that's a little bit further? Okay, you see where Highway 90 is. Um, just to the west of it, this property is, if, if, if that um, vicinity map were a little bit further out, you'd see the, um, okay, um, you'll see Theodore Dawes Hamilton um, um, on the southeast quadrant of that. That's the shopping center where the, uh, um, where the Winn-Dixie is. And immediately past the Winn-Dixie is where the, that access road, which is Boykin, what does it say, road? Oh, oh, Old Rock Road. Um, so, that will be you know, on southbound traffic um, and northbound too. That will be the primary access to this property, but also there at uh, um, 
What is that? Trey Margaret? Trey Margaret? Hankins. Anyway, that's a controlled light, so I'm sure that 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 uh, um, that our traffic will be going in and out of there as well as Old Rock Road. So there will be no no practical reason for any traffic to be going beyond this site. So so that that's all I have. Um, and again, it's just the only request is to uh, change that limitation on the Cape Cod. Any questions from y'all? We have to answer. <clears throat> Just question for staff, uh, Margaret. I mean, again, I'm looking at looking at the site, and I mean, obviously, there's a lot of front. Sorry, I'm looking at the site, and obviously, there's a lot of there is a lot of frontage. So I don't see where there could be a concern about multiple multiple drives. Um, but I think if there was anything else that was that was that came to be, if there was any more development proposed on the site other than what we see, they're coming back into y'all for another permit. Is that not correct? I mean, if there was. The thought of more storage or open ground storage, you know, with a I one, I think can't they can't they have a surface on there that's yes. subject to? No. It, it, it's allowed. Uh, but stone is allowed. If that's, I'm sorry, hey, Margaret. <laughs> I'm used to talking. I, I guess my point being is, is they would have to come in for a permit to get another curb cut or to get another more than what we're seeing here on this site because right now it's one big grass field with a proposed warehouse and a you know perimeter parking lot around it okay uh, the single curb cut was recommended by traffic engineering now if this property remains as one lot and the condition for one curb cut is on there then they can still come in put in new buildings they just be limited to the one curb cut however if they're going to sell off a portion of the lot or lease a portion, then they're back before you for a new subdivision. And at that point, they could ask for another curb cut or the commission can grant them two curb cuts now and design to be approved by traffic engineering and right away. Okay, that's what I hoped your comment would be. Thank you. Um, one question about that. I don't know if you're right about, certainly if we sold something, we definitely have to do a sub um, to create another lot. But if we improve a piece, any part of it back there for uh, for a laydown yard, then that's just a lease deal. That doesn't require a subdivision, does it? Is that new? That's new. <laughs> Well, I was wrong about that, but <laughs> but the request is still there. Yeah. And the point was was that if you if you did try to do something for a lay down yard, yes, uh, you know, you're going to be coming back into the permitting side of the house to get an additional permit. At which time, the traffic engineer can have another look at it and could probably coordinate with you, you know, where that driveway could go. I mean, again, it, I can't see a functional problem with there being more than uh, more than one driveway there. I mean, there's yeah, just, I just thought that it would be uh, from the permitting process. If we did come in for a separate permit for a yard, if we already had approval of a second driveway, all we have to do is get with traffic and just place it on there. That, that, that's correct. So that, yeah. that, I'm trying to minimize the amount of hoops to jump through yeah. up front. We are too. Question for Doug. So if they entered into a land lease agreement for the northwest section of the land, that would trigger a, a requirement of a subdivision? Yes. Under the, uh, in the Code of Alabama, if you look under subdivision, it talks about the division of land da 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 by deed or lease, and that wow. lang language was added, I don't know, 10, 12, 14 years ago. So we we've done plenty of subdivisions. Uh, plenty of subdivisions have come before y'all, pursuant to a lease. What regulation process would would make them come for a subdivision? Pardon? I'm just curious if they leased it to a uh, commercial and tenant. They leased part, lease part of a yeah, part legal of the land, record. and they just started operating. I mean, how? I'm just curious how they would be, how they would know, how they would know to even file for a subdivision. Well, if yeah, I mean, if 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 they're just going to do a lay down in the yard building and, permit, and not build anything, then they might could get away with it. But let's say it's a but Dunkin' Donuts at a shopping center, permit, and the building trigger. permit would ask for the subdivision. Yeah, that's it. Sharing of an 
Like, wasn't sharing of an access also true of PUD? Okay, so you, yeah, you're because you, you have no, you don't know where that other access would be. You're I'm sorry, to, you're, you don't know where that other access would be. Oh, right, really now. just it'd be in between there and the and the other, you know, and Eastern the Eastern. Yeah, sure. I have no idea. It would it depend on the and and if we did that, we'd have to think about the future development of the property to make sure wherever that driveway is in in the future planning would line up with any future plan. But when you got that much acreage, you got to be try to be smart up front. Is anyone else here to speak for agenda item number nine? Is anyone here to speak against agenda item number nine? Yes, ma'am. I see, I see three hands up there. We'll take the first one in the back. Yes, ma'am. Good evening. My name is Mary B. Walker. I live 7099 Old Military Road in Theodore, Alabama. And I'm here in opposition because we live across the railroad track. And uh, during times when the train is there, you can't get out. With the business coming with that uh, form of uh, trafficking, we would have a real problem getting in and out. And we have lots of children in that area. Rich if oil already is there with big trucks tearing up the roads. Uh, so I oppose to uh, permitting this person because of the residents of Theodore. And I'm here to speak out for those residents in the Theodore area that live right there in that area. Number one, there was only a sign placed there uh, from the city of Mobile about, I guess, maybe two weeks ago. Uh, I only spoke to two residents who had gotten notification. Now, I may be farther than 300 feet, but I do feel like that the residents of Theodore should have gotten a at least notification and know exactly what's planned to be put there before you permit any person to uh, start that business. And I, I'm in opposition for the children of Theodore as well as the residents. And we have a lot of elderly, a lot of times they need ambulance services. And with that railroad crossing there and we can't get out the other way, uh, I just oppose the cause of traffic situation. That's all I have to say. Good evening. Thank you, Ms. Walker. We'll come down the row, coming down the steps, the next lady that would like to speak or the next individual would like to speak. Yes, ma'am, that's you. My name is Mary Gibson. I have properties at 5230 Thompson Lane, 5230 A and B Brown Lane. And I'm here to speak this afternoon against it because of the fact that uh, we have churches back there. It's a residential area. And um, there's very much congestion when the trains stop on the track, when they're changing over. We're in the line sitting there for up to 30 minutes sometimes. And we've already had issues where we've come up and uh, addressed them because of the fact that we cannot get out. There's only one way in and one way out. And having industries in there, there's gonna make more congestions because we've already had to deal with one uh, company that has large trucks that are in and out all the time. and. And as Ms. Walker stated, uh, the roads are being torn up. It's very narrow in there. So it's really not uh, space 
to bring in a lot of traffic because we have children back there. We have a school. There are churches. People have their homes back there. And we don't know what is going on. And then we see a sign maybe about two weeks ago. And then the other sign he stated about, it was just placed up there, what, yesterday or maybe today, the sign that's next to the zoning sign. It wasn't there. And uh, people have questions. And they would like to have answers because we weren't notified. Uh, when we knew anything, the sign was there. And everyone had questions. And they came to different ones, which I'm the president of the CAG group down there, asked me questions to see if I knew anything about it. We had not been informed. And so we're here today because we do not want that in our community because we live there and that's our home. And we don't want a business in our residential area where we're trying to live and raise our children, our grandchildren, and where senior, senior citizens live. They want to get as much quality of life as they possibly can, just as any other citizen would like to do. So we are against it. Thank you, Ms. Gibson. Next, coming down the rows. Good afternoon. My name is Latidra Nelson. I reside at 7310 Old Military Road, and I am against the uh, the project that is uh, have an application at the was it Cal Harry Hamilton? I'm against it. Uh, the reason for me being against it is pretty much of what you just heard, and also it's a it's a more of a of residence and it's also a fact of emergency uh, that would affect not only our area, but other areas. We have a fire department, which have two accesses on one end and on the other. But if we have, if a resident have an emergency on this end, on the opposite end, where this company is trying to build or provide a structure, it, that, the, the uh, mobile fire department can't do their job. They can't get in and out because of the train. And then this would be a, a factor of making it more congested as well. Again, we have children. We have schools that come in and out. I have a sister that owns property right across from where this uh, structure is being held or trying to be placed. And we don't want it there. We don't want to, that to be directly across from our property where we plan to be our home. I build my home with the intent to be there. I spent thousands of dollars building my home. I do not want a company inside our residence. We are inside our residential area. We already have a company there, like Ms. Mary Walker stated, that is tearing up the roads and causing our life to be difficult, uh, tearing up our cars, it's hard to get things done. So to have transfer trucks coming in and out, hauling off uh, car parts, is what I was told. I know the gentleman stated, the gentleman stated that he's not sure what they're going to build, but I was told that it would be a distribution center for car parts, lift parts that lift a car. Now, if I'm wrong, someone else can correct me, but that's what I was told. Now, to have heavy equipment coming in and out in and out all day, that's, that's too much for our community, for our area to handle. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Nelson. We have had three speakers and we have room for one more, whoever that would like to be. Good afternoon, my name is Renata Durgin. I'm one of the property owners across from the request for the building site. Um, my concerns was more so um, just, I purchased that property with an idealistic mind to build a home for me and my children, me and my four children. And 
with that, I seen a sensibility of safety and security within that area, um, which was my reason for choosing that property. Um, not so much more, I didn't think of it to be so much of an industrial area um, to where uh, I could one day walk outside my home and, and see my kids playing and there's a factory across the street and strangers coming in and out and I don't know, possibly chemicals being released in the air. That's just my concern, more so safety and security. Um, and like the young lady before me stated, we received a notice, I guess because I was a property owner within 300 feet. Um, but when I contacted them and asked, I too was told um, that it was for manufacturing and distributing uh, car lift parts or something of that nature. And I was like, wow, another factory, more chemicals released in the air, more just that's something that that's that's important to me is just security and safety uh, for me and my children um, and the ideal to know that it'll be right across the street and there will probably be more development and more to me just strangers more traffic just just things that you don't think of or look for when you're wanting to build a home and and have a family and um, be within a community Residential, I just believe residential and communities don't mix. You know, when you when you go home, you you think of safety, security. You think of a nice, quiet community, which I know that's not always the case. But um, to just be able to be a part of a community and not a industrial site was always my idealistic dream when purchasing the property. Um, I like, to thank you guys for your time, and um, that's all my concerns I have. Thank you, Ms. Sturgeon. You're welcome. We are now at the limit on uh, speakers against this agenda item. I'll, I'll, I'll offer up the opportunity for the applicant to give any comments to those residents. And come on down, Mr. Metcalf. I'll try to, I was just trying to take some notes. First off, I, I totally understand um, um, neighbors' concerns. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I did what I could do. Now, one was right. I did just put up my big sign yesterday because I had forgotten that, that the meeting was coming this soon. But that sign will stay up. And this is a recommending body, as you mentioned in your preamble. So there will be another notice period for the neighbors to contact me or, or the city with concerns, which I'm happy to talk to them. And no one has called me and asked me about what it may be. So the, I'm sure the lady did call somebody, but didn't call me. Um, um, and when it said lift parts, that's true. This company um, distributes, they manufacture, but not here. They manufacture overseas. And their products, can, the reason they moved to Mobile from California is their products come into the port via container. And, and they're loaded on a flatbed, the pieces and parts of them. And then they're put in the warehouse, and then they're distributed back out. So there's no manufacturing going on here. Um, this is literally, and the purpose of this development is to be distribution, which is product in and product out. Um, with respect to churches, um, churches operate generally at night and on Sundays, and we wouldn't that wouldn't be a, um, our use wouldn't be affecting that. Um, the access uh, and the railroad, we can't do anything about the railroad, obviously. Um, and I come, that's an industrial area. Well, not there necessarily that much, but I mean, on Bellingrad. So I get stuck there too. Um, but the access points, there are two primary access points um, that are affected by the railroad. That's on Cary Hamilton and on Bellingrad. And if you notice in the residential um, area, the, the subdivided areas, which means where there would be homes, is, is situated on the southern end of that entire section, um, which means access by Bellingrad. One of the neat things about this site is that it is, I'm not gonna say surrounded, but it is, it is bordered on three sides by heavy commercial and industrial zoning. And this piece, is as far away from the interior of the neighborhood as, as possible. Um, so again, any uh, there will be trucks. I have no idea how many. 
um, but they will be coming into the property or, or onto Cary Hamilton from either the controlled um, light or Old Rock Road. Um, they won't be going past any 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 residential structures other than the one that I spoke to the to, to the man. So I can't under I don't understand how there could be really. I understand the fear, but as far as as as, uh, um, as security and safety, I can tell you that this company, um, this particular company, um, uh, they take it more seriously than, than I certainly do. They've got cameras up, and even during construction, they've got 24-hour cameras going on, and their access is is secured by by gates. So, because they're a California company, um, so um, I understand the fear. Um, but I don't really think that, given where we're situated, um, that it's really going to affect the interior of the neighborhood because the traffic's not going to be going any further than that. It doesn't make sense to go any further than that. Um, as far as not being noted, the other neighbors that were not notified, I think uh, one of the ladies said that she was on the north side. Well, there's no way to notify you got to quantify how you notify. Um, and so that's so the city is required to notify with 300 feet, and that's what I did too. So uh, um, again, I understand the fear. Um, if, if, this were, if this were something that I thought were going to hurt this neighborhood, um, I certainly wouldn't have been behind it. Um, and you know, I sit on the Board of Adjustment, and so we hear these concerns from neighbors all the time, and we take them very seriously. Um, so I understand both sides, but um, I think that again, where it's situated, um, and with the different access points, um, I think it's going to be okay. But Thank you, Mr. There. Metcalf. Any questions or comments from commissioners? Yeah, just a question for staff, specifically traffic engineering. If y'all looked at uh, impacts to that area, we've heard some concerns um, from the residents that live near there with with an increase in traffic ability with regards to emergency vehicles with increased traffic going in and out of, of this site specifically. Um, have have y'all looked at that traffic right here? Traffic's not here. Okay. Um, we, staff has been by the site. The primary access to the site is, is right there via Old Rock Road or Catherine Hankins. Um, logistically, I wouldn't see traffic coming up Cary Hamilton Road from Old Military. Uh, there are trucks coming in. Uh, when staff went by the site, there is an existing I-1 district to the east. The access to it is off Cary Hamilton Road, and so you do have that truck traffic um, using that same route going to to that site. But in turn, the the only comments we have from traffic engineering are those that you see in the staff report. Mr. Jones, yes. Um, another aspect, being so close to, I mean. The proposed curb cut is like 300 feet from the railroad track. So if there are already a couple cars, let's say that are that are passenger cars that are stopped at that stoplight, I mean stop sign, stop because of a train. I was there yesterday afternoon. Their train came by. Moves pretty quick. But um, let's say you had two trucks that were trying to come out at the same time. Can we go back to the site plan, Margaret? Okay. Let's say you got two trucks that are coming out uh, where it says concrete apron. That's where the that's where the uh, um, uh, that's where the the, the trucks um, load and unload. So if there were several cars already at the at the uh, um, at the intersection, they're waiting on the train. That truck's not going to pull out of there until he has um, enough room. So there would be internal queuing of those trucks. They're not going to come, and they're certainly not going to come out and have half of their truck sitting, um, um, sitting in the driveway and the and the tractor um, out in the street. That just doesn't make any sense from a safety standpoint. So I don't see, from a practical standpoint, how 
our traffic in and out of there is going to make anything worse at that buildup of the at the train. I'm not a traffic engineer, but that that makes sense to me. Well, what drove my question when you look at um, the locator zoning maps, Margaret? Those residential areas on Burroughs, Pope, Simpson. I don't know what route of traffic they normally take. I don't know if they come up to carry Hamilton and go south to Old Military and exit Bellingrad, or does Carrie Hamilton take the, the majority of that residential load out? And I don't know what that load would be. Uh, not knowing that is what drove the question um, as, as to what the impacts, additional impacts on Carrie Hamilton would be versus Old Mill. I'm familiar with that area, but I don't know enough about the residential traffic coming out of that specific area to the north of that residential area um, that, that what this site would impact. I mean, everything to the north of this site is industrial, as has been stated. You know, two-thirds of, of the site surrounding this is, is industrial commercial. Um, but what I don't know is really the, the traffic flow for that residential area. If it goes down old military Bellingrad, I see very little impact here. But the concern that I would have had that I see that it's addressed backing up on the on our drawings that Highway 90 is cut off a little bit, but I looked up I looked at it on, on a map here. And the good news is, is that Highway 90 actually has a dedicated left turn lane on the Ham on to Cary Hamilton. So any traffic, you know, whether it be commercial or residential coming down there, they've got a safe way to get off of the major highway. So there is a dedicated there's a dedicated left. Yeah. So so the ingress, I mean I, I would have to imagine Old Rock Road to Cary Hamilton is the way that 99.9% .9 sure. of the traffic is going to go now. That's right. If somebody lived south of there and they came up Cary Hamilton and worked there, maybe that might be a different case. But it's pretty obvious that any of any of the truck traffic would, would yeah. most likely use that that uh, Old Rock Road, which is non-residential. So. Yes, sir. Any further comments or questions from commissioners? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Metcalf. So we will now move on to agenda item number 10, the northwest corner of Range Line Service Road and Demetropolis Road. It's been recommended for holdover until the March 16th meeting on the subdivision, the PUD. Mr. Chairman. Yes, ma'am. We received a plan from them about an hour and a half ago. So staff is agreeable to a holdover to the March 2nd meeting. We haven't had time to review it. So we'll, we have a now a tentative recommendation for holdover until March 2nd. Applicant is present in agreement with March 2nd. And because it's on the agenda, is anyone here to speak for this agenda item? Anyone here to speak against this agenda item number 10, northwest corner of Range Line Service Road, Range Line Crossing? All right, seeing none, we will move on to the final agenda item number 11, 4101 Wimbledon Drive, Country Club of Mobile. Uh, we have a PUD and a planning approval. The PUD has been recommended for approval with two findings of fact and nine listed conditions. Planning approval is a tentative approval for, uh, with four findings of fact and eight listed conditions. Is the applicant present? Are you in agreement with the PUD conditions and findings of fact? Are you in agreement with the planning approval findings of fact and conditions listed? Applicant is present and in agreement. Is anyone else here to speak for agenda item number 11? Anyone here to speak against agenda item number 11? All right, that closes the public hearing session. We'll now move into the deliberation session. Question for staff, do we need to vote on number one for the holdover or is that already set? Moving on to number two. Extension of 4251 Bitten Spur Road recommended for a one year extension. Applicant was present and in agreement. So moved. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes for extension. 
new subdivision application number three 156 Cosgrove Drive, the Hilltop subdivision recommended for tentative approval with nine listed conditions. The applicant was present and in agreement. So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Agenda item number four, 3836 Gordon John Drive, recommended for tentative approval with seven listed conditions. The applicant was present and in agreement. Move to approve subject staff recommendations. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Sidewalk waiver application number five on the agenda, 1521 and 1525 Azalea Road and 4071 Halls Mill Road, recommended for denial of the sidewalk waiver. Move to deny. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor for denial of the sidewalk waiver? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. Group applications, number six on the agenda, 4570, 4580, and 4590 Shipyard Road, 3T's Trucking Container Subdivision. We'll take these separately. Subdivisions recommended for tentative approval with nine listed conditions. So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. The rezone's been recommended for approval with two listed conditions. So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes. Agenda item number seven, 401 Water Street, GDH Adams subdivision, as well as the rezone. We'll take them separately. The subdivisions recommended for tentative approval with seven listed conditions. The applicant is present and in agreement. Entertain a motion. Move to approve subject and staff recommendations. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The motion for the subdivision passes. The rezones recommended for approval. Several notes here regulating plan amendment and three listed conditions. Again, the applicant's present and in agreement. Entertain a motion. Move to approve. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. C, the text amendment to the uh, Appendix A, Section 10.B.7. Move to approve. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion to uh, amend uh, is passed. Agenda item number eight. Unfortunately, we have a recusal from Mr. Kirk Matei, uh, so we will need to recommend a holdover. March 2nd. Second. We have a move to uh, hold over to March 2nd uh, and seconded. Golly, a lot of seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Hold over for March 2nd on agenda item number eight. Oh, agenda item number nine, 6815, Gary Hamilton Road. We have the subdivision, tentative approval with eight listed conditions. We had a, con a discussion for the curb cut, and then we had a rezone recommended for approval with two listed conditions. Extensive discussion on, on this topic. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations. We'll take them separately. Subdivision, move. Yeah, move to approve subject to staff recommendations, amending note number six to allow up to two curb cuts with coordination with traffic engineering. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Oh, hold on Aye. just one Oop. second. I, I do have a point for discussion. So, um, Nick, I don't know if, if you've been made aware or not, but the staff uh, in the planning department has been directed by the mayor to take a look at some of the warehousing uh, kind of proliferation that we're seeing in the city. So um, I think my only hold up on saying, you know, thumbs up to, to another curb cut is to is a question that will the placement of a curb cut, uh, will that be something that they can just decide unilaterally based on the subdivision allowance that we're putting in here? The curb cut condition is only associated with the subdivision. It is not attached to the rezoning. So if they came back to request a, an additional curb cut, that would be strictly a subdivision action. Okay. So, so I think what my general concern is, is that, you know, obviously I'm, I'm here because the mayor told me to be here, but uh, he's, he's, articulated uh, 
concern based on uh, you know reports from staff. So uh, anything like if this were to be subdivided again in the future after it after it's potentially rezoned I one, and we have just given a de facto new curb cut, and we've kind of given I, I'm afraid that you know we're giving a de facto uh, free ride to just you know start putting in more warehouses and more curb cuts. So I just I say that to to say. I just want to make sure that there's there's still plenty of uh, checks along the way to make sure that we're not over proliferating warehouses. Yeah, I think what I see here is a scenario where you've got over 800 feet of frontage. I mean, most of the time where I think they're restricting curb cuts or where the desire is to restrict the curb cuts is when there's 100 feet and they want, you know, two curb cuts and 100 feet. So if it were something much less than that, I think, I mean, I would, I would probably agree with you and have a, have a concern. Uh, but all of the curb cuts are going to come with a permit and then trying to permit something from a functional standpoint. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I, I, done, I understand the concern, which I think it is a concern with, with, with the pressure to find places to, to, to do things. But additional curb cut when you have 800 plus feet, uh, I mean, it's, it's, not really, that big. It's, really, it's really not a big deal. So it, well, with that in mind, if they were to come back for a subdivision in the future, you know, to take that northern piece and, and to do something else of a similar magnitude on that site, that's that's all going to have to go through the same subdivision process and everything anyway. Once you create this legal lot of record and you assess, you allow two curb cuts on it, if they come back and say, chop off this part, the commission can then restrict this lot gets one curb cut, this lot gets one curb cut. I think the more likeliness is they need they're going to have trucks coming in and the trucks need to turn around and they've got some big area that's more lay down yard or more turnaround and so they come in one entrance rather than backing up and doing three point turns or whatever they do they make a big a big loop that's what I would when I look at that site that's what I would tend to think would probably happen or be the need for another 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 curb cut yeah okay I'm with you I said my piece We have a motion and second on the floor. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion for the subdivision passes. The rezone been recommended for approval with two listed conditions. So moved. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The motion passes. Agenda item number 10, northwest corner of Range Line Service Road in Demetropolis, been recommended for holdover until March 2nd. Entertain motion. So moved. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That agenda item will now be on March 2nd. And agenda item number 11, Country Club of Mobile will take these separately. We have a PUD recommended for approval with nine listed conditions, two findings of fact, the applicant is present and in agreement. Move to approve subject staff recommendation with findings of fact A and B. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 The motion passes. Planning approval. Recommended for approval with four findings of fact and eight listed conditions. Move to approve subject to staff recommendations with findings of fact A through D. Second. Properly moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion passes. Any further comments from staff? Anything else on the agenda? 